ChatGPT 4.0 came out recently, and with it, a whole new wave of AI trends has swept the internet. Y'all saw the Ghibli thing that's been going around that's probably gonna end in a lawsuit. My threads feed has been absolutely clogged with AI bros holding up synthetic images and saying, photographers, pack your bags, bro. <laughs> Graphic designers, give up, bro. The only cool career to have now is one that exists solely for the purpose of making money and contributes absolutely nothing creative or original to society. It's been a great time. But amidst the commotion, I have been seeing a really funny conversation emerge surrounding AI headshots. And I'm seeing this conversation on threads because I have curated my threads algorithm to be almost entirely photography related so that I can browse threads while I'm supposed to be working and it still kind of feels like I'm working. It's genius. This conversation about AI headshots goes like this. Someone feeds ChatGPT a selfie and asks it to recreate that selfie as a professional headshot. This person will then post a side-by-side -side of the selfie and the headshot, and they'll say something along the lines of, ChatGPT is broken, I can't believe it thinks this looks like me. And then everyone in the comments section will be like, it does look like you. And then the person argues and there's a back and forth, and then people in the comment section start trying it out for themselves, right? And they'll say, yours does look like you, but look at mine, mine is wacky. And they post their own side-by-side -side and, it also looks just like them. So this goes on and on and on. And eventually, you know, after scrolling through a bunch of this discussion, I start thinking, are all of these people trolling? Is this for engagement or something? Surely they know that it does look like them and they're just doing like rage bait or something, right? I mean, it is a bit weird to post a full picture of your own face as rage bait, but it's the internet, we've seen it all. And so then there's people in the comment section kind of asking the same thing, right? Like, are you all trolling? <laughs> or is this a new psychological phenomenon? One guy mentions the effect of hearing your own voice recorded and played back. This is called the voice confrontation effect. And it occurs because when we speak, we hear our voice reverberated through our bones and that changes the sound. And we're so used to hearing that version of our own voice that when we hear it without the bone conducted vibrations, it gives us the ick. I think it's also the same kind of thing when you see a picture of yourself that hasn't been flipped because we're so used to seeing ourselves in the mirror that when you see a version of yourself that isn't mirrored, it's the way that other people see you, it's kind of ick. There was a whole TikTok trend where people would flip their videos back and forth and then scream about being uglier than they thought. I suspect that's probably a part of it. Another recurring element that I see in this conversation is people who have no idea how old they look. People will post their selfie beside their AI headshot and say, oh my God, it aged me like 10 years. Girl, I'm sorry, it did not. So of course I tried mine and here's the photo I used and <laughs> here's what it gave me. And uh, <laughs> it aged me 10 years. <laughs> it did, right? Tell me it aged me 10 years. Please, please tell me <laughs> that it aged me 10 years. I just turned 30. I cannot be looking like I'm in my 30s already. Come on. Ugh, it's confronting. Confronting is the word that I might use to describe this feeling. It doesn't look like me. I refuse to believe that it does. And yet looking at it makes me feel very uncomfortable. It's like if you described me to the most talented forensic sketch artist and they made a hyper realistic version of the sketch without ever seeing what I actually look like. It's enough that you could probably pin a crime on me, but not so good that I couldn't get out of it with a good lawyer. You know what I mean? Surely. Sure, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Surely, like the... <laughs> if this woman were in a coffee shop, I would definitely lock eyes with her a few times, but I wouldn't ask to take like a twinsies selfie unless she was actually wearing this sweater because this sweater was kind of hard to find <laughs> and that would deserve a high five at least. Anyway, something that has made this topic interesting to consider for me personally is that I am fairly face blind, not like clinically, but also not in a small way. If you change your hair color, I won't recognize you. If you grow a beard, shave your beard, Change the usual length of your beard, gone. New person, blank slate, I will reintroduce myself. If you put on glasses, Clark Kent. Nice to meet you, I'm Yvonne. There are people in my life who I have known for several years and I will still introduce myself to them if I meet them out of context. If you are one of those people, I am very sorry. Perhaps consider getting an identifiable tattoo or piercing. I have had moments where I will go up to my own partner in public spaces, a man who I have lived with for six years now, and I will have to stare at him for a second to make sure that I am about to grab the right guy. But of course, looking at my AI headshot compared to my real face, I can tell you about 10,000 things that drive these faces miles apart. And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, if this weren't literally me, it would take me a second to be able to tell these two people apart. So apparently I do have the software to recognize facial features, which is why I say I'm not clinically face blind, but my brain is just choosing not to run it properly. So now I'm thinking about the science behind recognition and I wound up doing a little bit of research on how we recognize people. And it turns out that when we only have visual information about a person's face, the method that we use to recognize them is pretty similar to the methods used by AI. 
So if AI thinks this image is close enough that it will look like this person, we might think so too, if we have no other information about them. See, when you meet someone for real, like handshake face to face, or video I guess counts too, your memory runs a little algorithm, which all happens in an instant. Or if you're slower on the draw, like some of us, it might take a couple seconds or minutes. First, your brain decides if you have encountered this person before, familiarity. And then if you have, it will retrieve biographical information about them, memories of specific interactions you've had with them and their name. All of this information though is encoded separately in a series of processing stages or modules, which is why you can sometimes recall only partial information, like a face without a name or a memory of a person without a face. Your brain kind of goes through these parallel modules and assembles what information you have on them to piece it together into an identity. Importantly, you're not just recognizing them based on their face. And let me just say, thank God for that, because I would not be doing very well in life if that were the case. You're using their voice, name, body posture, and motion, hair, clothing, style, context of the interaction, and recollections of past interactions to identify them. You have this big, round, multifaceted cloud of information that allows you to identify a specific person. And this is probably why you, a longtime viewer and huge fan of my channel, may look at this AI picture of me and think, that doesn't look anything like her. It aged her 10 years. When you feed AI a single selfie, it doesn't have any of that important information. It just has the face. It clocks a few key identity markers, hair, skin color, face shape, how big my forehead is, and it whips them together to create a mock-up that checks enough boxes that it will trigger a recognition response in someone who has the same limited amount of information about that person. If we've only ever seen one picture of someone, our brains write out a macro overview of their key features. And if you show me someone with all of those features, I'll say, yep, that's them. Even if there are 10,000 less prominent features that are off. That's why you gotta feed it like 10 images from all different angles if you wanna create a more accurate result. And even then, it usually feels off. This result is based entirely on visual information, and it cannot approximate the complete holistic experience of recognizing that person. So how does face blindness relate to this? Well, when I showed my partner some of these side-by-side -side images, he disagreed with me on a bunch of them, saying, no, no, these don't actually look that much alike. Now I could just chalk this up to me being face blind, but there's people in the comments section who are agreeing with me saying, oh my God, yeah, these do look pretty similar. Now I should clarify, for a lot of these, I don't think they look absolutely identical. Like if I squint, I can definitely find differences, but it's close enough to me that I can recognize the person. Whereas for others, like my partner, there seem to be glaring differences. We are perceiving these faces differently, and I think it comes down to the granularity of recognition. Wow, I sound so science. People who are good with faces may clock like a hundred things that make a person's face unique. If only 20 of them match up, then that identity looks way off. People who are bad with faces may only clock like 20 things about a person's face. And if all 20 of them match up, same person. The AI is not very granular. It's not clocking very many characteristics, but then neither do I, so it works on me. And because you only see the information that your brain chooses to process, I literally cannot see the difference between these two faces, even if they look really obvious to someone else. I really do think it is highlighting differences in how we recognize people in the same way that the blue dress situation highlighted differences in how we recognize color and how the Laurel and Yanny thing highlighted differences in how we hear certain frequencies. Laurel. Our sensory organs are all beautiful, unique little snowflakes, and our experiences and perceptions of the world are all just as different. And that probably accounts for why some people think AI headshots are an acceptable replacement to real photographs. <laughs> well, guess what? Even though I think that these headshots look like the person they're supposed to, I can still 100% tell that it is AI. And if I see someone using an AI photo as their profile picture, I automatically assume that they are a scammer <laughs> because who uses AI profile pictures? People who are trying to fake what they look like, like 100% of the time, right? And I think the majority of rational people probably think the same. Funnily enough, all the people saying that AI is coming for my job, photographers watch out, they're all people who are trying to run these AI content farms and they're calling themselves digital artists and prompt engineers and they're sending outreach emails that are written by ChatGPT. Like, they are low key scammers, right? So I guess using your AI headshot is just like tagging yourself with a warning to people who value authenticity. I am not authentic and if you value that, do not interact. Kind of a useful filter if that's how you do business, I guess. But if you're a regular person or God forbid, somebody working in a creative field, do not use an AI generated headshot. Just use the selfie. A headshot is meant to show that you are capable professional, motivated, that you have standards, right? You're gonna put some time and money into representing yourself properly. An AI generated headshot 
does not convey those things. And it tells people that you don't value authenticity. At least the selfie is authentic. I know that it is in my best interest to sell you on professional headshots because I make money from taking professional headshots. But you do not need to go to a professional studio to pay someone to get headshots because any photo you take of yourself will be 100% better than using an AI generated image. And actually, if you put a little bit of work into it, like you can take self portraits that are actually pretty good with very little equipment. All you need is some decent window lighting, a nice outfit, a clean background, and some effort, right? Real images take effort. I'm sorry to tell you, but <clears throat> if you are willing to put in a little effort and learn how to take a great headshot for yourself, you can check out today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of creative classes in countless categories, ranging from beginner to advanced. Categories include illustration, design, animation, film, and of course, photography. If you're interested in learning how to take your own professional looking headshot, then check out this excellent class by Nisha B. She walks you through absolutely everything that you need to succeed over the course of nine short lessons. Her class is fantastic for beginner photographers and even people with no photography experience at all. You don't even need to own a professional camera. She has two modules dedicated to taking photos and editing them on your iPhone. And once you're comfortable taking your own picture, you can step it up a notch with this class by Finn Badgley that teaches you some great one light setups for portrait photography, or his other class that teaches you how to monetize this knowledge called headshot photography, money making portraits made easy. Photography does not have to be expensive or time consuming and neither does learning. And with so much potential for creative learning at your disposal, there's no reason to shy away from making real authentic creative products instead of just giving up and using AI. If that all sounds enticing to you, then you're in luck because the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today. And a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So as tacky as AI headshots look to those of us who can recognize AI when we see it, it has become clear to me that some people simply cannot tell. Recognizing reality is probably a similar process in the brain to the one that allows us to recognize people. As you are exposed to more and more AI images, you develop that checklist of features that belongs to AI images. And if an image checks enough of those boxes, you can clock it as AI. And some people go through that process differently with more or less granularity. And I think this is another kind of blue dress effect, right? We're all looking at the same thing, but we're all seeing something different. And I would love to talk more about this, like how we can recognize if an image is AI, I probably will make a video on it at some point in the near future because it's very much related to my job as a photographer and I think also really relevant to people in my niche. But I wanted to keep this video at a consumable length, so I'm gonna put that one on the shelf for another time. However, if you're interested in testing your ability to recognize AI, I'm gonna leave a link to a fun test in the description below. It's free, there's no sign up or anything, it's just a good resource for testing your AI deduction skills. I got 80% accuracy with most of my misses being real images that I incorrectly identified as being AI. I'll admit, I do find it way easier to detect AI photographs over AI art. And I think that's probably because I work with photographs and I know what is impossible or unlikely in a photograph, so it stands out to me immediately. Go try it and let me know your results in the comment section below. One more thing that I want to mention before I wrap up, and this could be like a whole tangent, I'm just gonna skim the top of it, is this idea that AI approximations of a person's face are soulless. I see this criticism again and again of AI images. And while I obviously want to agree, it does have some strange connotations, mainly that it implies that one's soul can be captured in a photograph, but not approximated through AI. Since the invention of photography, there have been cultures and communities who believe that one's soul can be trapped within a photograph. This belief was not nearly as widespread historically as it's like chalked up to be, but still. I did a whole video about photography and horror, and in it, I touch on a lot of myths that are weirdly relevant to this conversation about AI. In a way, folks who believe in ghost and spirit photography kind of implicitly believe that souls can be captured in photographs. I don't believe that. So then how can I believe that an AI image is somehow less soulful than a photographic one if I don't believe that a photographic one could be soulful. It's gonna take some thought about what a soul is and what a soul looks like when it's depicted visually, which feels like a very abstract topic. Another thought that is kind of creepy and totally unrelated to this video, I'm sorry, is if you believe that AI images do look like real images, like, like you're the kind of person who's okay with using an AI headshot and you believe in ghost and spirit photography, could a ghost then 
appear in an AI image in the same way, be captured by the machine. There's a whole genre of TikTok content where people are using ChatGPT as like a digital Ouija board. Again, totally unrelated to this video, topic for another time. But I just mention all of this because I do wanna flag it as an interesting and thus far overlooked aspect of the discussion. What does it mean for an AI image to look soulless? And that is all for today's video. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I had fun putting this one together. It was kind of a stroke of inspiration. You'll remember in my last threads related video, I said that I would have to find a new video topic related to threads so that I could continue to justify browsing threads. And here it is, I succeeded. If you liked this video, you can leave a like, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. I will see you all next week with another video. I'm gonna be talking about the Instax Wide Evo. I know everyone's excited for that one. I'm excited for that one. So I'll see you guys then. And in the meantime, I want you all to stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.